So we got the Honda in this morning. It's got a leaking balance shaft. So we're going to put a new seal on the balance shaft, and it's going to get a whole new timing belt on it just because it's heavy oil contamination. So I haven't gotten much done so far. I got it up in the air. I started getting a part here. But I've got to run to Napa and go get some wheel bearings for a trailer. So Chris is just going to hop in on this, get this going while I go grab some bearings. So this is that trailer I had to go pick up bearings and races for. It wasn't very fun. The ones that came off here were pretty damaged, and there were no part numbers on them. So we had the fun job of measuring them all at the parts store and then cross-referencing them through a book, which... At least there's a local store that's willing to do that. Most parts stores really don't like having to find stuff like this when there's not a part number available and they can't just search by vehicle. That's why I use Danville Napa. They'll go above and beyond, which Chris at O'Reilly's in Plainfield is really good about finding stuff, too. This oddball stuff. Both of them are really good to go to to find stuff. You can find, go to either Danville Napa or yeah, most parts stores, when you walk in there and tell them you've got bearings for a trailer and it's something they can't look up, man, they just give you the nastiest look possible. But well, luckily, we're out in the farming community, though, so that's how they make a lot of their businesses, old yeah. bearings off of farm equipment and stuff. Yeah, luckily they're not afraid to get the dial caliper out and get the bearing book out and actually search for things by their sizes. They're not afraid to do their job. Upside to having a service truck, too. Use it to move the trailers around the lot, and then all the tools to work on the trailer are right there. And let's walk back in the shop and go grab stuff. Done. I don't want to go too far. I need to figure out where my stopping point is. Make sure it has a back stop. Okay, it does have a spot where it stops at. Does it? That's the question. No, I can drive that thing all the way in there, I think. Now I'll do a little bit more. Let's see. Make it there. Honda's all apart here. So right here on this balance shaft, this seal pushed out, and if you look, there's now a plate that goes over it. We're able to get that through Napa to fix that problem, that seal popping out. So that just bolts in there and stops that seal from being able to come out. So we just got it all cleaned up with some brake clean and a blow gun. And it should be ready to, for this to go back together. So we're going to get some of the wiring taken care of. We just swapped this Predator V-Twin in from that engine on this scissor lift. So we're getting the wiring done enough that we can get it drove inside and work on it because we have some rain coming. Apologize for the audio too. Um, the neighbors picked today to cut down a tree and we've been listening to that the whole time. So we're working on more of the wiring on the JLG here. Uh, 
So with this retrofit, a bunch of wiring has been changed over to this new motor. So we're working on getting power back up to our ground control panel first. Once we do that, then we'll start getting all of these switches to work with those engine controls so it's not going to be controlled from the engine. Once we have it down here, we'll get the deck lowered down and we'll make sure that we have controls up top for it too. All right, we got our controls working. You ready? We're getting ready to try for the first time to lower it and see what we're going to have to mess with over there. We're pretty sure we're going to have to change the exhaust on it. I don't think it's going to be able to clear it and put a turn down. All right, ready? I'm going to go slow and in steps. It's an on-off switch. There's not much easy. That's pretty successful if we're able to go all the way down with it. How much room is there on that exhaust? Not much. Not much. So it's are... definitely gonna have to be adjusted. I'm gonna have to build a bracket for this fuel line off this front cover to hold it back. This oh shit. You can shut the ignition off, that would be nice. Things are the ignition's off. Okay, that'd be cool. So but uh I gotta take this. I mean we knew we were gonna have to you know secure some fuel lines and get the wires held out of the way. The big thing we were worried about is we had to swap this with it up in the air. We wanted to see it come all the way down, make sure we're not going to crush anything on the motor, the exhaust, and all that stuff. No, it, it it's going to be tight, but it's it's going to work. I mean, the old motor was tight in there, though, too. Yeah, but it sat the other way. Yeah, it, it's in line, not a V. Um, I may end up moving this, making new brackets and moving the oil cooler down just a little bit to give us a little bit more clearance right here. But really, other than that, finishing up some wires, it's... I'm going to cap the plug the exhaust off there and I'm gonna drill a hole and go out the bottom and run a pipe out the bottom so but other than that stuff I mean of all the problems we could have had swapping a scissor lift that I don't know how old this thing is but it's up there mm -hmm. neighbors anyway but yeah of all the problems we could have I mean if we just got to rerun the exhaust and clean up some wiring and stuff I don't think we're doing too bad and then I gotta figure out the, I gotta make the choke not work on a push pull. Like I gotta make it, I gotta hook up a spring to it and uh, use the cable for it. But instead of it locking it out, I'm gonna have to use the bracket and stuff off of that. So we'll have the electric choke function. So when you start it up, you can start it up there with the electric choke still or down here. Yeah. So I gotta make some little stuff like that. Bypass that key switch and make it work off the key switch on yeah, the chassis. Yeah, I'll take the key switch out and wire it in which I've got my wires here um, I got the ground down there this is my crank signal and then this is my ignition power so what would be ignition power out of this will get hooked to this one what would have been the crank wire out of the ignition switch will get hooked to this one and then the ground will just be hooked up to a ground on it so it's relatively simple just a couple wires uh, I need to hook my other power up for the wire that feeds that solenoid um, I'll put that solenoid in here. So between the exhaust and that stuff, there's probably a couple hours worth of stuff and it'll be done. How long do you think you got in this thing all together by the time you got the engine swapped over oh, from that uh, to this? Uh, <clears throat> we'll probably have eight to ten hours in it, but I'm probably only going to charge Richard like three hours. Yeah, but I mean still, eight to ten hours <laughs> isn't bad to completely repower a piece of equipment make the mounts, get the hydraulic coupling hooked up. I mean, it, it really wasn't that bad. It's just getting all the parts and 
getting them here was the worst part. No, the one that's going to be a pain is the Mustang because I have to literally make everything for it. Yeah. The Bobcat. Yeah, that Mustang right there is donating its 2.3 liter Lima for this Bobcat. That is going to be a lot of work to get that to fit in there. This what the three cylinder Kubota? Yeah. That's what used to be in here? So we've measured and it'll fit. So a 2.3 liter is going to live inside of here. It's going from what, like 30 horse to 120? Yeah. This thing ought to do some nice wheelies. Yeah. Or blow pumps out of it. I'm, hopefully I can set it to where it doesn't idle up above like 2,000 RPM. Yeah, I think over 2,000 we're just going to blow the pump to pieces. Well, that and it's just going to be a waste of fuel. It don't need all that power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could probably leave this thing at an idle for the rest of its life and it just sip on fuel. Is it bad, though, that you've made your cheap skid steer more powerful than your big skid steer? Yeah, but I can't pick up it much. Yeah. So the Honda's going back together here. I'm trying to get the covers back on. I'm working on the bottom side with little Tyler's up on the top side getting the cover on up there. Should be getting pretty close to getting this thing back together and having it running. Well, we were having a little bit of issue getting this upper half of the timing cover back on, so I ended up having to loosen the valve cover, and we got the cover in place up under that lip. I was the one who took this off. This was off before I started working on it, and I didn't realize it had to come up like that to be able to get that up in there, but we got it. So, we're getting close. Once I get this done, I'll get the motor mount back on, and then I'll start working on the belts and stuff after I get the tripod out from under it. Ow. That kind of hurt. So we got all the engine mount bolts just in here. Loosely right now we got it lined up. I had to use a bar. Get the engine back in place. It does move a little bit when you take the mount out, but it's supported from below, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, well, we got the top side of the motor all finished up here. So we just gotta get the splash guard on down below and uh, we should be ready to try to test start this thing. Hopefully it'll fire up, no problem. There we go. Honda's done. So this one we can get taken back up front and then come pick it up. <laughs>